and welcome in to the recruiting room in Scott Stadium. It is a party this afternoon in Charlottesville as we are celebrating the newest scholar athletes for the Virginia football program. 22 players from 10 different states all signing NLIs today. And that's exactly who we'll be talking about today here from Scott Stadium. Glad to have you with us. I'm John Freeman. We'll be talking with Cavalier coaches. We'll talk with athletic director Carla Williams and a whole list of people involved in recruiting this new class of scholar athletes at the University of Virginia. You can see behind us, there's food being served. The assistant coaches are here. It's going to be a good time here. We should go about 90 minutes. A quick note we can only talk about players that have signed so the nli is coming in today we can only talk about the players who have signed we may have some future commits whether it's the transfer portal or prep school players but we can only talk about players who have currently signed and you can see when they signed directly below at the bottom of your screen and time to welcome in justin sparrows the director of recruiting this has got to be your Christmas. I know Christmas is in a few days, but this is such a, a huge day for you, your program, and a culmination of so much hard work. Congratulations. Oh, thank you so much, John. Thank you. And, and you know, today's, today's a huge day for us, but it's a, it's a bigger day for the families and the, and the prospects of these, of these 22 guys. So, you know, so much hard work has gone into it for, for their whole, you know, their whole life, not just their whole, you know, high school career. So, uh, so man, just, just, just a big celebration. We're so fired up to be here and, and uh, welcoming this, this, this new crop of guys to, to uh, our, our family here. So, now you're, super excited. you're a young guy back mm -hmm. in the day it used to be like huddling around the fax machine right how did the nlis come in today oh, when did they start rolling in this morning exactly so I, i'm grateful for the fact that i'm you know i, I don't have to live through the fax machine days so <laughs> so we're actually docusign so it's all electronic which which has you know surprisingly enough has its own set of you know set of issues and stuff like that but you know today was all smooth this morning so it was it was it was a big morning for us so coach elliott rolls out a vision Mm -hmm. for the football program. It's your job to put the pieces in place to be able to go find players that fit that vision. What is that vision here and what you're looking for in players? And how does this class reflect that vision of Coach Ellie? You know, I, I think first and foremost, John, it's, it's really it's really just carrying out Koji's vision of finding players that, that, that you know, want to, you know, want to be fast, intelligent, tough, you know, and, and, and kind of buy into, you know, being a program that acts, right? You know, being, being you know, being all about, uh, our, our core values here and, and, and being tough, you know, loving football, uh, you know, finding guys that, that, that love football and then also want to compete at the highest level in the classroom. So, you know, finding like, like that's kind of the criteria that we that we try to, you know, go out with uh, and, and then find guys that that, ju that just align with that. So and but it but it's definitely not me. It's I mean, it's everybody involved. It's all of our recruiting staff and we have absolute rock stars just just throughout the whole the whole recruiting office, our coaches, support staff. I mean, we have a, we have a staff full of people that have no ego truly and it's, it, it makes coming to work a joy um so and yeah so i mean yeah, bring them on out please so we got katie gusto <laughs> summer 2j carrie kane evan butts blanda wolf zach bradshaw uh you know adam choice we got we got yeah please give them, give them a round of applause because now they're 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 you know very very deserving of being recognized because i mean this this is truly the group that keeps the machine running um, you know, I might be on here right now, but like it's 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 everybody behind me. It's it's you know folks in compliance, academics, facilities, you know, and, and then I mean, shoot, our, our our coaches are the ones on the road on the front lines, you know, catching 5 a.m. flights, staying up. I mean, I, I think Coach E was out there just just. I mean, he was he, he probably got 10 hours of sleep the whole the whole contact period. So, uh, man, I'm I'm just grateful to, to 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 work with these guys and our staff. So, man, I'm just it's it's a pleasure for me to to just to just to be associated with with this school and the, and the staff. Now, signing day happens. Obviously, mm -hmm. there's some maybe some more guys that'll sign in the future. Mm -hmm. Any of these guys get some days off coming up for, oh, for yes. the holidays? Hey, <laughs> absolutely. You know, I think the only one that that uh, might not you know get you know get some time off is Adam Choice. Uh, you know, because he's he's kind of you know. You know, he's kind of our portal guy. So, <laughs> so you know, the portal never sleeps there, John. So. Yeah, absolutely. We'll talk about the portal. But mm -hmm. first of all, congratulations to you guys mm -hmm. and everything yeah. that you've done to put this really impressive class together. Thank you. A lot of undergraduate or prep school prospects. You also inked four transfers mm -hmm. in the last uh, 24 hours or so. Tell us about the transfer portal and how that uh, impacts the way that you recruit in college football these oh, days. Oh, man, it's, it's, it's changed the game. I mean, it's definitely changed the game for sure. But... You know, having a little bit more structure with the portal windows has has created a little bit less chaos during the season. Uh, but man, once that portal opens up on the fifth, it's 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 for agency. So um, you know, you might have coaches on the road that are that are going into high schools, going into homes, and then certain guys might be hitting the portal, which changes plans. It changes, 
you know, it changes visit plans and all that. It changes your official visit weekend plans too. So, you know, you, you, like, like you got to be ready to adjust on the fly. Uh, everybody, you know, not just me, our coaches, you know, our, our, our travel folks, everybody. So um, it's, it's just creating a lot more uh, just frenzy, I'd say, just, just during the contact period in December. But it's, it's fun. I mean, it's like putting a big puzzle together. So it's fun. All right, maybe another signature coming tonight, we will hope, potentially. Yeah. But we can't obviously talk about the player, but yeah, we'll, we'll talk see. about the, the opportunity. But yeah. what are you doing tonight? You finally get a, a good oh, night's man. sleep yeah. and, and get to lean back, <laughs> eat some fish and pig back here. Exactly. I'm, I'm going to start with this fish and pig for sure. <laughs> and then and then just, you know, hang out, hang out and just, and just relax, man, and just, and just enjoy it. All right. Well, we're looking for we got all the highlights of the recruits that you guys have brought in. We'll talk to position coaches. Mm -hmm. and we'll talk with John Rosinski next, the uh, defensive coordinator. But congratulations Thank you, on all of the work that you've done and the culmination today Thank of you. 22 guys signing up for UVA. Thank you so much, John. That's Justin Appreciate Sparrows, you. the director of recruiting. Next up, John Rosinski, defensive coordinator here at UVA to talk about all the defensive guys that Justin hauled in for the Hoops. <laughs> We got John Rosinski, defensive coordinator for the Cavaliers. Big day for you. Bunch of prospects signing on the defensive end. And I love the sign that sits outside your door in your office. And it says, quote, bring me men. Tell us about the men that you brought in today. Yeah, you no, know, you just look at uh, the nine young men that we brought in. Uh, what, what a great group of guys that are going to, you know, contribute here to the University of Virginia, not only as football players, but also as students. Uh, you know, you just look at the families they come from, the backgrounds they have. Um, you know, it's a great group um, that will continue the tradition of football here at the University of Virginia. Coach Elliott has the vision. Justin talked about it and what type of players uh, he's looking for overall. Uh, for a University of Virginia football player. How about on the defensive end? What are the traits that you're looking for when you go recruit? And then how are they represented in this class? Yeah, I, I think, you know, collectively, when you look across the country, you know, great football players are going to be guys that, you know, that have great length, um, that have that show, you know, unbelievable athleticism. But the other intangibles that are part of a really, really good football player are, the, you know, that, that aptitude. And then also, as far as, you know, showing that, that they're going to be really, really well-rounded. And, uh, and that's what we see in this group. Um, not only are they leaders on the football field, but they've been leaders in their communities. And it, it'll be awesome to get them here to Charlottesville to have them part of this community. And then academically, these guys obviously fit the bill. These, it's a tough place to, to go to school. We all know it. I graduated from oh, UVA. Yeah. Classes are hard, but these guys fit the academic profile. And I love what Coach Elliott always says. Scholar athletes, not student athletes, scholar athletes. And we got some scholars, too. Oh, oh baby. Oh, baby, do we. <laughs> you know, as far as some guys that, that win in every regard. And that's what's fun about being able to recruit to, uh, to shoot one of the top, you know, schools in the country is the opportunity to bring a young man not only to play at the very highest level, but uh, to win in the classroom as well. Tell us about the recruiting trips. Yeah, planes, well, well, I tell you what, airplanes, planes, I, trains, and automobiles, <laughs> that, that, that's, what, that's the world we live in. Um, but, you know, and it start, goes back to last January. Um, you know what? We, we, you know, I got in. Uh, we went to a team meeting where, you know, where the staff was introduced, and then we got on a plane right away and started, you know, we're on the recruiting trail, and we're, we were down in Virginia Beach and, you know, got to see it. You know, actually, shoot, you know, one of the young men that uh, is part of this recruiting class, uh, you know, big Aunt Britain. Uh, you know, we saw him in a parking lot during a fire drill wow. um, with the wind blowing there in January. And uh, you know what? It's amazing to see it all to come to fruition in these great families that are now now part of the family. Yeah, we'll talk about Anthony Britton in our next segment. I will actually look at his highlights. Virginia guy. You got four Virginia recruits across the whole class. Yes, sir. Uh, not just on the defense, but how important is it to build a wall? around the borders of this state when building this yeah, program. Yeah, and it, it starts with, uh, you know, having great guys here from the state of Virginia. Um, and I tell you what I know, if when it's your flag um, that you're playing for, it's, it's darn special. So we're, we're blessed to have a good group. Coach, what's uh, what's the plan for the holidays? You finally get a few days off? Yeah, no, I tell you what, you know, we're going to, 
We're going to enjoy it as a family, and uh, you know, shoot, we're just blessed to be here in Charlottesville to be able to be part of this community. And uh, there's so many great things happening, you know, all, all the time. And then also, I tell you what, just you just look at what the basketball program's doing and the sports across campus. Um, it, it's fun during the holidays to be part of this awesome university and also this great community. Well, we love that you're a part of it. Congratulations on the nine guys on the defensive end that you guys brought in here. Looking forward to seeing them in Charlotte. Yes, sir. Well, thank you for having me. That's John Rosinski, Virginia's defensive coordinator. Now we're going to transition. We'll see some highlights of the players and we'll unveil the 22 players that make up the 2023 recruiting class for the Cavaliers. And we'll start with Kevin Downing, defensive tackle coach, next. Some of the time to take a look at some of the prospects that we have that have signed today in our celebration of Virginia's newest recruiting class. We got Kevin Downing, defensive tackles coach. And coach, first of all, congratulations. That's the, the word today to tell everybody that this is one marathon to bring these kids in here. How are you feeling about your guys? I'm just super excited um, about the guys we're bringing in just because of the people who they are first. Just great guys, come from great families, and just super excited to get a chance to officially welcome to the family and have a chance to coach them. Can't wait. Yeah, so we get a guy from uh, from Norfolk, Virginia, Lake Taylor High School, and Anthony Britton. We'll take a look at his highlights in a second. But, again, we're talking to Coach Rudd, Virginia guy. Love getting guys from in-state, and that's something that we're looking for in the future. So here are the highlights of Anthony Britton. What do you like about this defensive tackle from uh, such an important high school in, in high school football in Lake Taylor in this state? Well, the first thing we wanted to concentrate on was size. And we talk about Anthony Britton. He's 6'4", you know, 275 pounds, and he's a big athletic guy. Um, and I had a chance to live eval him. You know, he came to our camp. Um, I had a chance to watch him play in person. Um, and and he, he has all the attributes that Coach Elliott is looking for in the program and the non-negotiables. He played really hard. He's tough. Um, he's detailed. He played on both sides of the ball. And he's a three-down defensive lineman. I mean, he can rush the quarterback. I mean, he talked about a guy that had 30 sacks, you know. So we're just super excited about him. Comes from a good family, loves football. He's tough and he's going to be a great ambassador of the program. And Lake Taylor is such a, a big program when it comes to success in this state. He's also a winner, which is something that goes throughout all of the recruits today. You look at their high school records, Lake Taylor went 11-2, and and he was one of the reasons why. Yes, yeah, he was a big reason why. Just anytime you can bring guys from great programs um, and win a lot of football games, it's a plus. So super excited about Anthony. So he's a Virginia prospect and Anthony Britton. You went all the way down to Florida to find your next defensive tackle prospect, Jason Hammond, one of two guys from St. Thomas Aquinas. We'll talk about the other when we start talking to uh, the offensive coaches, but you get a guy, Jason Hammond from Fort Lauderdale, St. Thomas Aquinas, another really good football program. What do you like about his game? Uh, the first thing is jumps out, he's a winner. You talk about a guy that won multiple state championships. Size was really important. You're talking about a guy that has a 79-inch wingspan, so he's a guy that's going to be big in there for us. He's another three-down defensive lineman. He can rush the quarterback. Uh, he can stop the run. He's super twitchy. Um, comes from a good family and a good program. Just super excited about him. Um, we have a chance with him and Anthony to be a force in the inside in years to come. Yeah, and his cousin, uh, Jaleel Johnson, an NFL player, currently plays for the New Orleans Saints, so we know he's got some good blood uh, as well. And just take us through technique-wise. What yeah. do you like about him when it stood out? Yeah, the thing you see is about he's a guy that can get both feet in the ground really fast. He's got movement skills, short area quickness. He has the ability to rush the quarterback. Back. You see him flip his hip several times. You see him transition rush several times. So he's a guy that's coming in. He was coached really well in high school. His high school defensive line coach, um, Andre Carter, played in the NFL. Actually was a de defensive line coach at LSU a couple years ago. So super excited about him, and he comes from a great family. Great, great family. So these are your guys. And one thing, too, is players obviously like playing for you and being coached by you because we're bringing back a bunch of guys that played here last year, as, as Coach Elliott just announced. Yeah, I, I think a lot of it is just – 
Um, the system that Coach Rudd has put in place is a fun system to play in if you're a defensive lineman. Um, you get to play a lot of multiple spots. And I just thank the brotherhood that they built with each other. Um, they love playing the game. I'm super excited about, you know, for me, it's Aaron Famui who's coming back. Super excited about him to continue to see him grow, um, not only as a football player, but as a person. So excited about it. Um, but I think a lot of it has to do with the system. It's a fun system to play in. Looking forward to it, Coach. You get a little time off in the holidays? Where are you going? Uh, you know what? It's whatever the wife tells me. That's what I do. <laughs> hey, it's her time now. <laughs> yeah, that's isn't right. it? That's Recruiting right. season is still going, but you know, hopefully you guys get a few days off. Thank you so much for coming by, Coach. Uh, thank you so much. That is uh, defensive tackle coach Kevin Downing, and we will next transition along the defensive line, and we'll talk with Cavalier legend and current defensive line coach and defensive end coach and Chris Slade and who he's got in this Cavaliers recruiting class. This one or this one? Your highlights will be right here. Both the same. Our signing day celebration, and I'm John Friedman. I don't know if this guy needs an introduction. It is Chris Slade, Cavaliers defensive end, edge rushing coach, ACC's all-time leader in career sacks. And, uh, Coach, you pull in three defensive ends in this upcoming class. What do you like about the guys that you brought in here to UVA as scholar-athletes? You know, they're all very uh, very big kids, long, rangy, athletic, um, something that you need at that position, uh, the defensive end and bandit position. They're very, very unique um, uh, with, the, with their skill sets. Uh, I'm excited about them. They're, they've done a a great job with the whole recruiting process. Um, they just, I'm very excited. You know, they're explosive, they're big. Um, they use their hands well, they get off blocks. You know, all the things that you're looking for in that position. When you go into their living rooms or contact them, are you selling your career at UVA? What's your pitch point when it comes to, to bringing in guys? I'm definitely not doing that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, if that's the case, they won't come. <laughs> so I'm just, uh, I'm going and just talking about Virginia. And, and what the school means. And we, well, I will talk about what it means to me because I am an alum and I did play here and I was a part of a lot of really good teams and played a lot of really good players. So I, I do, will get, I will give my testimony where that's concerned. But the big thing is, is coming here and, and, and adapting to Coach Elliott's culture, um, how he sees the program. And we're trying to find those kind of kids. And I think these three fit the mold. And Coach E's done a good job of laying the foundation. I just got to go get find the, the big bricks to make that house build. All right, three edge rushers from three different states. We'll start with Makai Buchanan from Ackworth, Georgia. He was a defensive end uh, there, first team all region. What did you like about him uh, when you saw him on the recruiting trail for the first time? You know, I, his length, um, he can run. I went and watched him play in the fall, and the thing I really that really stuck, you know, got my attention when I texted the coaching staff, I was like, this guy can run. I mean, he runs like a gazelle. I mean, he has a great deal of stamina and conditioning. Uh, he, he's got great balance. He has long arms. He can do a good job of setting the edge. He can come off the edge and rush the passer. But again, man, I just love the fact that the kid can run for days. And, and you just, in that position, you gotta have a, you got to have a lot of athleticism. But, but I just enjoyed the way he can get from sideline to sideline. Yeah, and his team started 1-5 and five this year, and he helps them get to the state playoffs in Georgia. So a leader as we take a look at his highlight tape. What do you like about his technique? 
Well, you see right here, he's, he's had his hand in the dirt, but I mean, he can stand up, he can play in the two point. You can see right here, he's in the two point, which is what we'll want him to do at the bandit position. Uh, he gets even with the quarterback, he has enough awareness to come back and make the play. Uh, I'm, one of the things I always preach about is don't get pushed past the quarterback. It's the worst place in football. And just watching him in high school, he does a good job of having quarterback awareness of coming back and making a play. Uh, he can drop in coverage. He's athletic enough. You see him right here taking an inside move, finishing up, um, getting, a, getting a sack. Uh, there he is coming off the edge again. Um, just coming down the line of scrimmage, man, playing from sideline to sideline. And, uh, again, his effort and his uh, tenacity is what really stuck out to me outside of his physical stature, which I thought was very attractive. Yeah, so he plays against some of the best teams in Georgia, one of the, the, the great states for high school football uh, yeah, I, in the country. Yeah, I coached down there for 10 years as a head coach, man, and, and I've seen a lot of good players, but they got dudes down there. So for us to get one of their dudes to bring him up here to Virginia was pretty exciting. They got some really good players. All right, so you go to Georgia for him. Then you go to outside of Richmond for Miles Green, the defensive end from Highland Springs High School. Uh, same high school as Billy Kemp, Cavalier wide receiver, another good in-state guy. What excites you about him? You know, Miles is a big physical kid. Um, he, he uses his hands well. He's, 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 uh, he does a good job of changing direction. Uh, he's an in-state kid, you know, like you just mentioned. I think that's, that's obviously very attractive to us. Miles' uh, dad actually was a Virginia grad. So, you know, just wanted to keep those guys in state. Um, and, you know, watching him play and watching him mature and, and flourish through this whole entire process and committing to us early back in the summer, uh, we knew he was committed to the program and he's going to be a big impact player for us. Coach Downing done a really good job of recruiting him. That's his school, and he just passed him off to me, and I just hope I don't mess it up too bad. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll be all right. Let's take a look at the highlights for Miles Green, a guy who went 15-0 and at Highland Springs High School in his senior career, did not have a loss his entire senior campaign. Well, that's the one thing that all the coaches say when they come back at AC Highland Springs. They say that team is very well coached. I mean, that's what everyone says. That's the consensus. So hats off to their staff. But, I mean, you see Miles here. Like I said, he's a, he's a stout kid that can really do a good job of setting the edge. Uh, he's not going to be out of position much. I mean, again, that goes back to um, the coaching. Uh, when he's supposed to squeeze, he squeezes. So when he steps down, he's supposed to step down. He's not going to be out of whack. He plays, out of, plays with a lot of control. Uh, and a lot of times you don't see that on the guys at that age. They kind of play wild and kind of loose. Uh, but he plays a lot of, a, a lot of power. Um, and he's a stout player, so he'll be a good defensive end for us for a long time. Yeah, playing for Lauren Johnson at Highland Springs, Absolutely. one of the great coaches in Virginia. All right, so last one for you guys. Defensive end, DJ Jones from Tampa, Florida. What do you like about him? <laughs> I tell you what, I, with him, I was so excited for him. You know, when I, you know, I, when I came back to the staff, we went around the room, we talked about certain players, and I said, you know, to me, this is love at first sight. I don't know if that exists in <laughs> recruiting. But I just fell in love with the kid, um, just his smile, uh, how big he is. He's a big, burly, big-chested kid. Um, he's physical. Um, but the thing that really attracted me to him was I got a chance to watch his basketball highlights. And there's a left-handed dunk on there that he did. And, and I sent Coach Elliott and some of the guys of him. I said, I don't know if this guy can play football, but if he can do this, I can make him. We can, we can work with him. No, and uh, he's just – the basketball highlight got to me because you could see his athleticism and how he could move. And you see a kid that size that can dunk a ball with that much ease. That was attractive to me. He was also a tight end prospect. You got to fight Des Kitchens for uh, for him, the tight ends coach here at UVA and the offensive coordinator? He's an edge guy, 100%. <laughs> Either he's an edge guy or a power forward. He wanted the two. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see if Tony Bennett's interested. Let's take a look at the highlights for DJ Jones, uber athletic guy from Tampa, Florida. Take us through just his technique and what you saw him when, when you first saw him. Oh, I like his power and his get off around the line of scrimmage. And then, you know, after the play, you know, he's, he's celebrating, but he's not celebrating by himself. It's all about the team. And that's something that we talk about here. No one's bigger than the team. And you can just see, man, he, plays, he loves football. He has a great passion for it. Um, he's just a big physical uh, kid that has a lot of growth. Uh, his upside, I think, is just off the charts. Again, he's a basketball kid, but he also loves football. And he realizes that, you know, his career is going to be setting the edge and playing the end. Um, you know, this kid could probably even play a little bit of inside later on down in, the, in, the, you know, later in his career. I'm so coach Downing, I like to hear that. But he, he, he's that versatile, and I think he's that athletic. And one thing I noticed about his stature is he's a big kid up top, but he has small legs, and he has skinny legs. So, you know, you see those guys like that, you kind of get a track. You, you're like, okay, this kid can run. And, um, and that's kind of part of the eyeball test. You look at all that when you're recruiting him. And when I saw him, I was like, he's a big kid up top. But, he, but his legs are kind of small and skinny, so I know he can move around and run. And, 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 he, and he didn't disappoint. I got a chance to spend about an hour with him in the school. Um, and, I mean, from the beginning of our conversations, man, he knows what he wants. Um, he's locked in. 
He's uh, very, very focused. And uh, to get him out of Florida, particularly down in Tampa, I think it was a great gift for us. And it was like, it was kind of late in the process. But when I saw him, I was like, Coach, let's look at this kid. He, he's the kid that we need to get in this program. Hillsborough High School, uh, Coach Garcia does a great job down there. Coach Elliott and Coach Kitchings and uh, Coach Gaither, they all had great relationships with him. And I'm excited about him. And we got three guys I think that can not only make a difference, but also make a difference in the games and in the program. And uh, DJ is also a chess player, apparently. Did you uh, ever ever bring out a chess board and, and see, I, I'm see not, who wins? No, I don't, I'm not a chess guy. I'll do checkers, but not chess. That's DJ. <laughs> now, <laughs> oh, here we go. Let's bring in. <laughs> I, I've been told. I've been told we got some stories about Chris Lee. Oh, Everybody knows who this guy oh, is. Yeah. Head coach oh, Tony yeah. Time for me to go. All right, you, <laughs> coach, you hired this guy. That's right. And then you let him drive. Oh, What's Lord. that like on the recruiting trail? Well, I was hoping that uh, this time, go, this go round, that he would actually improve. Uh, but I think he might have got worse. And so here's how bad it is, right? Okay. When you pull up and you get off the airplane, right, and there's five coaches, right, you got two cars, four coaches in one car, and he's driving by himself. <laughs> and we're down in Florida now. We're in Florida, and he's got a he, – now, you know he drives a Tahoe, right? Okay, that's a big car. So, big car. So then he gets into a Tahoe, and we pull up to the school, and we're like, why is Slay driving with the back window open? And then he gets out. I was like, man, I was wondering why I had a breeze in the car. <laughs> so apparently he doesn't know the buttons in the Chevy Tahoe. So he's hitting all the buttons when he gets in the car. And he's got the back window popped open, riding through the streets of uh, uh, St. Petersburg. Right? And then we get out. He's wondering why, why he's got so much air it, in the car. It was hot, man. I had to get some air in there. <laughs> he knows where the start button is. And he knows where the gas pedal is from what yeah, I hear. He tried to blame it on it was a newer model. <laughs> That's it. I'm man. not buying that. I'm an old school. I got a 20, man. He has a 23. He, he knows. <laughs> Have you ever been tempted to let him show a little game tape? of himself when he's going to recruit well you know that's up that's up to him but i'm telling i'm telling all the guys that i'm looking for somebody that can come to uva and break all his records yeah that's what i'm trying to find who's going to be who's going to be the guy that becomes the student right that overtakes the teacher that's right i hope so that's what we're looking for that's what we're looking for yeah, yeah. with coach slade when you send him around virginia high schools they know who he is obviously how much oh. of an advantage is that oh of course man i go in i'm the third wheel especially when i go with him and coach Higgins. <laughs> and we go down to the beach and you know you you would think as the head coach that you're the you know you're the priority <laughs> the half of them like Who's this guy with you? Like, like, oh, we know you. We know you. But no. who's this guy? You, you um, should have seen this guy in Florida. Rock star. <laughs> Everybody in Tampa and the whole state of Florida knew him. But I tell you what, I, I tell you this, that we don't have a more difficult and thorough evaluator of, uh, of prospects than Coach Slade. And I've been around a while, and I've, and I've been very thorough in my own right. But if a young man doesn't have the, the, the proper inflection in his voice, <laughs> if his handshake isn't firm enough, Right, he can be eliminated right on spot. So these three guys that we're bringing in uh, off the edge, uh, trust me, they've been vetted out. Uh, he's been very thorough, and, and trust me, he takes a lot of pride yeah. in in the standard of that position. Obviously, because he set the standard, and uh, he's looking for young men that are going to come in first and foremost and embrace what it means to be a Virginia Cavalier, what it means to be a student at the University of Virginia, and then what it means to be a, a defensive end pass rusher uh, at UVA. Love it! Congratulations, Coach. Some speed rushers. Speed rushers. Are they some slow drivers, or they they got to <laughs> at a certain mile per hour when they well, get the well, 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 you know, we have, we, have, we have a holistic approach here, right? <laughs> so Coach Slade definitely will not be in charge of driver's <laughs> education uh, with these guys. We, we will, we'll turn that over to the Cav Code folks and let them teach them how to drive. All right. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate we'll talk with that Coach Appreciate Tony y'all. Elliott more in the program. <laughs> there is Chris Slade. We'll have some more recruiting stories for you as well from the road as these guys put together a 22-member class. We'll talk with another former Virginia football player, Clint Sintop, in our next segment as we continue to look at the defensive players in this recruiting class for UVA.
Welcome back. Continuing our celebration of the Cavalier recruiting class for 2023. 22 different players from 10 different states. And we continue to go down each position looking at the highlights for all of these new scholar athletes for the Virginia football program. And let's talk to an old scholar athlete for yes, the sir. Virginia football program. That is Clint Sinsome, the linebackers coach here for the Hoos. And Clint, one really good guy from the state of Georgia, Landon Danley, is your haul this year in the linebacking core for the recruiting class. Tell us about him. Yes, sir. Uh, Landon Danley is a, a great player out from South Carolina, a really good athlete. Uh, but the most important thing about Landon, he's, he's a great kid, comes from a great family, uh, and he's a winner. And he's a winner, and I think um, he'll add a lot of value to our program, both on the field and off the field as well. Yeah, went to Dutch Fork High School, 15-1, and one, state champions, as you said. Yes, sir. A winner in his senior year. Don't you love that DNA in oh, guys of, of winning programs? Got to. Um, you want to build a program of winners. Um, obviously, you know, Coach Elliott is doing a phenomenal job just trying to build this program the right way. And uh, one of the biggest things he said, he wants guys who love football. And uh, this kid, Landon, loves football. Uh, he's all about winning, and he's immersed himself uh, within his team trying to get better, and, and hopefully he can bring that here to the Cavaliers. Yeah, not only is he a good linebacker, he played pretty much every position. He was a quarterback at one point oh, in his man. high school career. Yeah, he, he's done everything. He's played safety. He's played quarterback. He's played receiver. He's just a big, long rangey athlete. And when you got guys with that type of length and that type of athleticism, Really, as long as they love football and they're tough enough, you can put them anywhere. So we're really excited about them. Yeah, so let's take a look at his highlight reel. Landon Danley from yes, Dutch sir. Fork High School in South Carolina. There he is, the safety. A lot of form tackles, a lot of good hits. Tell us about what you saw when you first looked at him on tape. Yeah, I mean, even in that clip there, you can see his pedal and his transition. And, and as I said, man, he's not afraid to, to put his face in the fan there and, and put a guy on the turf and great body control. As I mentioned, he has good length. Okay, you can see him leave his feet there and, and wrap and roll and bring a guy to the ground there. So with that size, that athleticism, that length, he can do a lot of different things for us. Uh, he's going to get bigger. He's going to get stronger. He's going to get with Coach Smo uh, in our weight program. And he's just going to continue to develop. And uh, man, I'm, I'm so excited about him because the sky really is the limit for a guy like this who loves football, who's hardworking. Okay, and just really has so much growth potential. Played 38 games in the last three years of high school football. Yeah. Won 36 of them. That's in impressive. In a state title, so yes, a, a winner. Uh, when you pitch Virginia, what do you say about your experiences at UVA, and, and how does that play out on the recruiting trail? Yeah, um, you know, it, it's easy. Uh, Virginia was a, uh, a very special place to me then, and it is now uh, for so many reasons. Um, obviously, I played here, and I, and I graduated here, and – um, really matured here at Virginia. Um, the campus, the culture, just the people you're around daily allows you to grow. So uh, for me, sharing my experience is obviously important. Um, I think it's easy now with Coach Elliott, uh, just for his vision for the program and where this thing is really going. Um, I think it's a win-win, okay? Huge academic support, okay? And then obviously the football piece, which is continuing to grow uh, under Coach Elliott, who has done it at a high level. All right, so you bring in a teenager, Landon Danley, to Charlottesville. You brought in a few young ones to Charlottesville in the last couple of years. You got a two-and-a-half-year-old, a, a seven-month-year-old. Yeah. Uh, it's a busy, busy uh, couple of years in the Sintom household. What are you doing for the holidays? You guys are getting a little time away, right? Yeah, yeah. So we are um, – my wife uh, and the family have set up a cabin. Uh, so we're going to go out to the cabin and, and spend some time out there. And, you know, as I mentioned, there will probably be 11 people in the cabin. So we'll have at least nine babysitters, which is, which is huge. <laughs> Uh, for my wife, man, um, anybody who knows, you know, as a coach, you know, you're on the road a lot. And, and my wife's been holding down the fort uh, faithfully, and, and I appreciate her for that. So um, much deserve a little bit rest and relaxation with me home and, and the many babysitters that we'll have. Coach, congrats on, on bringing in Landon, and uh, we'll talk with you soon, all right? Absolutely. Thanks for having me. That is Clint Sintom, linebacker's coach. Next, we'll wrap up the defensive part of the program. Karome Cox, defensive back coach. We'll talk about all the guys that he's bringing here to Charlottesville in a moment.
back in the recruiting room in Scott Stadium as we roll on on our signing day celebration here in Charlottesville. John Freeman now joined by Karome Cox, defensive back coach for UVA, Virginia native, Alexandria guy. And uh, coach, you pull in three guys on the defensive backfield. We'll talk about all of them. These are my favorite highlights, by the way. We'll, we'll take a look at the highlights in a moment, but there are some athletes that you got. Tell us about the three as a whole, and then we'll look at their individual plays. Well, one, they're just tremendous kids, you know, and a lot of times you see the athleticism on both sides of the ball. Um, they have, you know, what they're doing is they're giving us an impact. We have a position that has a lot of production, and these kids can come in and make an impact for us early. Yeah, so we'll dive right into it. First guy. First signature of the day, by the way. It's 7 o'clock, it was 7 a.m. when the players could actually send in their documents. He's the first one to come in. Trent Baker Booker from Lawrence Central High School in Indianapolis. Tell us about this kid. Well, it tells you he's competitor. I said, hey, let's see if you can be the first one. And, I mean, he was after it early, and it was important for him to do that. Uh, also shows his confidence, plays with a lot of confidence, wants to get better, is a good worker. Um, comes from a great family. You know, they were really supportive to see him get, get this opportunity. So he's fired up and we're fired up just to get him here. He keeps asking, when can you get this and when can you get that? So it's now the end of that close for him and now starting here at UVA. And Virginia fans will, will certainly like this fact. Same high school as basketball national champion Kyle Guy in Lawrence Central High School. Huge football program there, huge athletics program at that high school, and uh, he's one of the best athletes uh, that, that you've got in this class, right? Oh, yeah. Um, we played Illinois. It was great to get a chance to go watch him live, and it was as soon as I got there, it was a pick six. Then it was, you know, you saw some plays on offense. You just want impact guys that just literally want to be competitive on all sides of the ball, and that's what jumped out to us. And then he came here right after that and showed he wants to be a part. I think that's lost in this thing, guys that want to be a part of something. Yeah, so let's take a look at Trent's highlights. This is Trent Baker Booker from Lawrence Central High School in Indianapolis. Going to see a lot of interceptions, and then you see the hitting side of his game, too, on this. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you guys have met Coach Rudd, but they better be willing to tackle. <laughs> what do you like about his technique? What stands out to you? Well, it shows versatility, you know, and it shows that a lot of times in high school you don't see too many kids disciplining what their technique is and staying locked in, and he has a tremendous focus. You know, coming in, one of the things we told him is, the non-negotiables is effort and focus and toughness, and he shows that in all of this film you're watching right here, and he bought in and wants to just get better at it. So he's listed uh, as a safety in recruiting. Where do you see his position when he gets here in Charlottesville? We, we see him as a corner. But one of the things about that room is versatility. You know, you saw throughout the year, guys played every position. Because if you're, it, it's not just about being one position. You're a football player, right? You should have all that opportunity. Six foot two, as well as a corner. You guys like those big corners, like uh, Anthony Johnson style, right? It's it, you can't coach length. You can't coach length, and sometimes it makes up when the coaching falls back. That length that just down balls and open field and make plays on it when it's up in the air. All right, so Trent Baker Booker, one of your three defensive back signings here on signing day, early signing day, that is. Move on to the next one. Caleb Hardy from McDonough, Georgia, uh, from Eagles Landing High School. What do you like about him? Length again, <laughs> student of the game, uh, tremendous student off the field as well. Uh, you know, going to recruit him, great family atmosphere there, great food. You know, but it's interesting. You see him off the field, and when he gets on the field, he hits that switch, and he's ready to go. Um, you know, you saw him playing multiple position. He plays low. He plays high. He plays special teams, and it goes to show you that guys just don't want to come off the field. You know, he's got an athletic background, too. His cousin Leonard Little played in the NFL. Yep. You know, this is a guy that knows how to succeed at the top level because he's seen it from his family. Correct. We were talking about it actually at dinner when I had sat down with the family, um, and it was just he just loves to learn. You know, he watched, He could tell me stuff that we did that a lot of ca kids normally don't do. Um, and he's, he's just really quiet, but he's confident, and I love that part about it. Guys that don't need to talk, they just let their work do it for yeah, them. Yeah, let's take a look at his tape. Six foot three as a cornerback here. This is Caleb Hardy from McDonough, Georgia. What stands out to you when you watch his film? Just right there, just to the close on the ball. The body, for that length, to have good body position. Um, and you see him sinking his hips, keeping his eyes up, stepping into contact. Look right here, versatility, high points hit. I told him right here, you better get in the end zone. But hey, at least the offense right there helped him get in for the next play. Um, you know, one of the things we got to do is he's going to have to develop in the weight room. Coach Smo's going to do a great job with him. Uh, when we in the spring, you saw, when I went in there right away, you can see him eat peanut butter and jellies. He wants to get stronger and he wants to get better. He's listed at 181 right now. Where do you see him when he, he gets on the playing field for you guys? Wherever God wants him to be. <laughs> you know, I'll do the coach and I'll let Coach Moe do the working. Yeah, so this is Caleb Hardy again from Eagles Landing High School in Georgia. Also, uh, again, we always talk about athletes, state finalist in the 200 meters in the state of Georgia so he can fly. I told you, the, the kid is long and he can move with that. That's the thing that guys don't understand is changing direction while you're at, at that speed. 
He oh. can do it really well. All right, so this is Karome Cox, defensive back coach for UVA. We've talked about two of the three. Let's hear about the third one. Keandre Walker from North Carolina was a quarterback and wide receiver, versatile player uh, for East Lincoln High School in Denver, North Carolina. Let's start with state, tra state champ. He's a winner. I mean, this kid is special. Uh, I've had a chance to watch him, Coach Rudd. Coach, and, I mean, the moment you get to the game, it's an offensive touchdown. It's a pick six. It's a special teams touchdown. The kid's a winner. He's confident. Um, we, got, we, we got him early, and it was right away. He moved around the camp. Everybody's like, wow. You know, I was actually out, with, uh, out of the office that day. They called me right away. This guy's a difference maker. So we're just fortunate to be a part. I mean, the family's tremendous. Miss Bev supported us in every way. We're excited to get him here, and you guys are He'll be a name for you guys to keep watching, man. Yeah, so he goes 16-0 and his senior year of high school at East Lincoln High School. He was also the outstanding offensive player in the state championship. In that game alone, returns an interception for a touchdown and catches one. Athletic, athletic, athletic. All three of your guys. I know. I tell you guys, it's, it's, I feel blessed that these guys want to be a part and just shows what we're trying to bend, build here as a program. We're looking for that mold, and these guys are fit. We, we've come through a lot of guys, and these are, the, these are the top ones for us. All right, let's take a look at Keandre from Denver, North Carolina, East Lincoln High School. This tape from his undefeated senior season that won the 3A state championship in North Carolina. And, boy, he look is a playmaker right look, off look the that. jump. <laughs> And he does it so effortlessly. I mean, he's just there, and it's just easy for him. What else do you like about him on the defensive side of the ball? You can also, woo, that might be the highlight of the day right there. That is. I know. You he, were there for it, right? Yeah. <laughs> he likes to ask questions, you know, so it's great that he knows that he's, he's accomplished a lot, but he just wants to know the game. I think that's the most important part is the, at the DB position is learning the game. And I think just the way this kid moves and has an impact to the game is just phenomenal. Look at this, going this, in and out. This is my favorite highlight of the day, other than the hit. The reversing the field a couple times. I'm telling you, this guy's good, man. And he has fun. You know, look at him having fun out there. Another look at Keandre Walker. Another one of your large cornerbacks, six foot three. I don't know if you've seen the ACC and the talent we got, so at least I have a start with the length. Yeah, so that's Keandre Walker. And, uh, Coach, thank you so much for, for coming by. Congratulations thank you. on all the guys you brought in. You were telling me you get a few days off. Water and warmth are oh, in your future. I'll get home today. I'll get that itinerary, what we're doing. <laughs> Here's what I know. I'll see my family. She'll see hers. And we're going somewhere with a lot of water and heat. So I'll, I'll let you guys know when I get the itinerary. Coach Cox, congratulations. Enjoy the time off. Thank you. appreciate it. That is Karome Cox, Virginia's defensive back coach. We'll step aside. When we come back, we'll have Carla Williams, who will unveil some new renderings of the Football Operations Center. The public has not seen them. We'll take a look at them next with Athletic Director Carla Williams.
Welcome back to our National Signing Day celebration here in Scott Stadium in the recruiting room. And glad to have you with us wherever you're watching. And we've talked with Cavalier uh, coaches. We've talked with head coach Tony Elliott, who will come on later. And now we get to talk to everybody's boss. It's Carla <laughs> Williams, the athletic director at the University of Virginia. And Carla, uh, this is a celebration not just for the football program, but for the school in general. When we bring in scholar athletes and UVA and these coaches behind us have certainly put together a class that represents everything that this university wants in a student athlete. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I, I love recruiting. Um, I love to meet with the recruits when they come to grounds and the parents and and to stay in touch with them. And um, so I think the coaches have done a wonderful job uh, bringing in a, a class of, of student athletes that fit, um, that we know will help us continue to build the program. And we're selling both the present and then also a vision for yep. Virginia football in the future. One of the parts of that vision is the Football Operations Center. How many times are you walking by it <laughs> as they're digging deeper and the construction vehicles are there? When you look at it every day, it feels like it's going up a little slower than it probably is. You know what? I uh, So my office is right there uh, next to the construction, and I open my windows, regardless of the weather. If it's raining or cold, it doesn't matter. I open my windows so that I can hear the construction happening because I'm so excited. I'm so happy for our, our players, our coaches, our staff, our program, the university. You know, this is, uh, this is huge for our program and just another step towards where we know we're going to be. And when you came to UVA, one of the first things that you said is, this is a glaring need. And then you made it happen. How do you think this is going to change the future of the Virginia football program, having a facility like this finally come to fruition? Yeah, I mean, you know, we identified the need, uh, but we didn't get here alone. So we've had a ton of support uh, from the university, from our donors, uh, from former uh, players as well. So, you know, having this facility um, announces that Virginia is uh, plans to compete for championships in football. And so this this facility is just one part of that. Um, and we've got, you know, other things that we're working on as well. But uh, having the facility certainly sends a message that we plan on competing. So right now it's kind of a hole in the ground <laughs> as there's <laughs> digging and digging and digging. Let's take a look at some of the shots of the future football operations center. And this is what you see out of your window every single day, isn't it? <laughs> it, it is. And I think, I think we're probably around day 95 or so. I've been keeping up with it, uh, but we've uh, a, a lot of work has been done. Uh, this is going to be a huge facility. It's going to take up the entire length of a football field um, and so they are, have started uh, underneath with the subsurface and, and the basement and the loading dock and all of those things and so we're starting to see it come up out of the ground which is really exciting. And then what is the timetable? So we plan to move in in June of 24 so not too long from now there so yeah no it's it's moving really quickly um, and that's that part of it has been really, really exciting to show parents and prospects as well so they could see that it's happening and we'll be in there soon. Now, with any construction project, we always have the initial renderings. Mm -hmm. There have been some new renderings that have come out that are just a little bit more detailed of some of the rooms and the facilities and some of the I, I think we'll see some what ice baths and, and hot tubs <laughs> in there as well, like the whole gamut of what's going to be in this facility. So we'll take a look at those. These have never been seen by the public. So recruits have seen it. It's been uh, shown around internally. But a lot of the things that we're going to see in the second part of this clip are new. Yeah. And I want you to take us through everything that this facility has that you and Coach Elliott and the people involved deem was super important for this football program. So it's a 90,000 square foot facility and it has everything that our program will need in one place. So first of all, you think about the efficiency. Uh, we, we ask a lot of our student athletes and they're great students. Um, and so to have a place where they can get everything done in an efficient manner is really, really important. So the weight room that leads out to the practice field, um, all of the meeting rooms, uh, the, the coaches' offices, their locker room, their lounge, there'll be places in there for them to, to gather and to study. Um, and so, you know, this gives us a chance to allow our student athletes to be the absolute best that they can be. And that's what we owe them. We owe them the opportunity to be great, to be excellent. And so this facility will give us a chance to do that. 
There you go. Here are some of the new renderings. I don't think I've seen these until today. I know it seems <laughs> you probably see these every single day when you're, when you're flipping through the computer, but is that Papa Shot over there on the left <laughs> side? Well, you know, you know, now uh, they spend so much time together. Um, and we want them to do that, to build a sense of team and a sense of community. And so we want this to be a place that they uh, want to spend time in, in addition to studying uh, to be the best football player they can be. We want them to be able to, to prepare their bodies, to prepare their minds, uh, to be able to be uh, the best that they can be. And it also allows for them to have a place to study and, and prep for, for classes uh, because they're also very serious about that as well. All right, so we got the Football Operations Center going up. Uh, lastly, if people are feeling generous for Christmas, what, what can they do to, to give to help this football program and the athletic department as a whole? Oh, absolutely. So Virginia Athletics Foundation is our primary source of uh, raising money for athletics. And so we are we continue to raise money for our facilities. This is a, a phase of the master plan. We still have a second phase uh, left to go with our Olympic sports. And we're always uh, looking for support to help us with uh, enhancements for the football program. So um, you can contact me. If you, <laughs> I'll be happy to take any calls if you're interested in giving uh, to help us get to where we're trying to go. Carla, thank you so much for coming by. Congratulations on everything that we've seen on the screens today. And then uh, happy holidays to you. Any plans for, for your Christmas break? You know what? My, my children are home, and so I'm going to spend a lot of time with my family. Well-deserved rest. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for coming by. Yeah, absolutely. All right, that's Athletic Director Carla Williams. We'll continue on and break down the rest of Virginia's recruiting class here on our signing day special from Scott Stadium. It is our signing day celebration from Scott Stadium. We've talked about the defensive players that are coming to be scholar athletes here in Charlottesville. And now we transition to the offensive side of the football. I'm John Freeman, joined by offensive coordinator and tight ends coach Correct. in Des Kitchings. And uh, uh, coach, you got three guys that we'll talk about all across the offense. Okay. We'll also talk about the first transfer that yes. we've brought in here uh, in a moment in Dejon Parker. But we'll start with Takai Kirby, yep. whose last name is very familiar, very familiar to some Virginia fans. And also Chris Slade. I think he was the lightning and the thunder and lightning poster, if you've ever seen that one. I have seen that one. <laughs> so they were high school teammates. They were. Yes. There you go. They grew up together. Uh, so Takai Kirby from Fort Lauderdale, St. Thomas Aquinas, one of two St. Thomas Aquinas players in this class. Tell us about this tight end who's got orange and blue blood. Yeah, so it goes back to the summer. Um, Takai came up for one of our summer camps. It was really impressive with his speed and uh, footwork and blocking, but his vertical speed and ability to catch the ball as a receiver, and then he displayed for us this season his ability to block as well in the game. Yeah, so he goes 51-2 and two yes. in his high school career yes. at St. Thomas Aquinas. One thing that we've talked about so much with this class is you guys are recruiting winners, and yes. we look at state champions, we look at MVPs. 
He's another one of those guys. Yeah, that, you know, that goes to what the vision of Coach L in our program here, being a fit program, a model program. And you, you do that in the locker room first, inside out. And so we, we targeted the right type of guys character-wise, uh, attitude, you know, coming from winning background to go along with the athletic ability. Let's take a look at Takai's highlights. Six foot yeah. three, 210 pound, tight end. Not only does he catch the ball, he blocks. So we'll see he some blocks. catches, but like he's a the, big block. The, yeah, this first play here shows him running vertical down the middle of the field. So you can see that uh, addition to our offense to stretch the field in the middle and putting a vertical threat there. Uh, then this next one, you're going to see some of his physicality here, uh, pull on a gap scheme. You know, we can coach up some other things, but at least he's trying to get in there be a willing blocker. Uh, then another catch here of running a crossing route across the middle. Big target guy, you know, and adjusting, making a catch there. Um, and then we finish up here with just another opportunity for him getting out on the field, showing some uh, blocking, maintaining the guy on the perimeter, uh, finishing that, you know, 15, 20 yards down the field. So Yeah, I had a chance to talk yeah. to him at the spring game. Really yeah. nice kid, too. Great kid. Well. Great kid. You know, instant leader coming in the locker room. You know, has a lot of pride about being here at Virginia. All right, so that's Takai Kirby, one of the uh, sons of Terry Kirby, former yes. Virginia running back, and he is a tight end that we look forward to seeing here in Charlottesville. Now we'll move from tight ends, which is yep. your position that you coach, uh, to one of the first guys to commit. In fact, the first guy to commit yes. in this recruiting class. It is Cole Serber from Patriot High School. He's going to enroll at UVA in January. In Janu uh, no, he's a... Summer enrollee. There we June. go. All right. Yes. So we'll take that back from the yes. bio, but yeah. he's still the first player to commit to UVA in the class of 2023. He's really led the charge with his recruiting class and has stayed faithful to his commitment throughout. Yes. Yeah. Cole is one of those glue guys, right? He's He joined us first, and he's been very uh, interactive through social media with the commits, and, and uh, anytime he's shown a visit, he's very interactive with the, anybody that was on grounds. So what do you like about his game? So Cole has a, a good physical body. Um, that can, can be a, a player for us on the interior as a guard. And just, you know, he's a coach's son, so he's got all those intangibles, you know, got some leadership traits about him and, and a nice frame that we can work with. Six foot six. Yes. 285. Correct. Where do you think that can get? Uh, we don't need to get too big. I mean, but, <laughs> you know, you, you sure believe he's going to be a 300 pounder and, and we just continue to improve with all these guys, athletic ability, particularly as an offensive lineman, the ability to move for us is very important. But he comes with a great foundation that we can build on. Take a look at his highlights yep. for head coach Sean Finnerty at Patriot High School. Yep. This is Cole Serber. Yeah, Let's so see. you get to see these guys come off the ball here, you know, blocking on the second level, creating some displacement there, which is good to see. You know, now you're going to see some athleticism here from him. He's going to be a puller and be able to adjust on the second level, get, get a body on the body, you know, and, and finishing there. Um, you know, another inside run, pull type deal. So you get to see him just using his mass to create some displacement. You know, look, pass block, a little RPO deal, finishing the guy in the end zone. So just that demeanor, you know, a finishing demeanor, that's what you want to have as, as an offensive lineman. So it's great to add, add Cole to the group. And he's from the state of Virginia. State another from the state of Virginia. thing that we've talked about. Yes all day is yes. how important this Commonwealth is to the future of this program. Correct. And that was a point of focus, right, to kind of reestablish our footprints as a new staff in, in the Commonwealth and recruit there and then branch out from there. And, and uh, we target some guys that we believe is going to help us in the near future and in the long term. All right. So he's a prep prospect. Now we'll talk about the first transfer. Yes. You've got four transfers in this class as a whole for the program. First one on offense, Dejon Parker from Saginaw Valley yes. State University. What was the process for landing him? So our recruiting department and then our QCs and analysts did a tremendous job of knowing what we need to address through the transfer portal. Those guys were working tirelessly to evaluate the thousands of kids that was in there, right? And with uh, Dejon, what pop, one is his athleticism, speed off the ball, and his toughness so as a lineman. So if we have those characteristics, those traits, then we believe we have a guy that can do some things for us up front. And then once you get to talk to him on the phone and just hear his story and just see his character, the character that he has, you know, is an ideal fit for what Coach Elliott and what, what we envision as guys in our program. So he plays 11 games for Saginaw Valley mm -hmm. State uh, in what was his senior year. He's got another year Correct. of eligibility here yes. at UVA. And we'll take a look at his highlights at the collegiate level, one of the first times that we've had yeah. a chance to watch some college highlights. <laughs> yeah. And he's a big guy. And oh, he's 6'5", 300. You, you see the length, right? Long arms, long limbs, and just athletically, he's got some power, some punch. Obviously, as an older guy, he would develop even more so here in our weight room come in January because he will be here in January. And uh, he's just wired the right way. Great family, great uncle, great mother. And uh, he's very uh, 
prideful about this opportunity, you know, and making an impact for his family, not just on the field, but off the field. And is he a guy that you see having an instant impact when he lands here on ground? Uh, he was recruited for that purposes. So he, he knows the magnitude of what we need up front, and uh, he's willing to accept that challenge. There you go. Yeah. That is Dejon Parker from Saginaw Valley State University. I mean, look at University. that guy, man. He can move. <laughs> he sure can. Yeah. So. Coach, thank you so much no for problem. coming by. What are your holiday plans? Nothing. Nothing? Yeah. <laughs> you guys going to a cabin. You're just doing nothing. Nothing. So, Holiday movies, Netflix, or just nothing. <laughs> okay. uh, simple All enough, right. Coach. No problem. Enjoy the time All off. Right. We'll see you soon. Th thank you. <laughs> that is Des Kitchings. You at least get to go eat. <laughs> you don't have to do nothing here. As Des Kitchings, we'll talk. We'll clear some airtime because Marcus Higgins is coming up. Former Cavalier quarterback, now wide receivers coach, associate head coach as well. He's got five guys we got to talk about, and we'll talk about them next. Continuing to celebrate the recruiting class here at Virginia. 22 players that the Wahoos have signed in the early signing period. Again, we can only talk about the players who have signed. There might be some in the future, but the guys who sent in their signature this morning, uh, you can see them at the bottom of your screen. And boy, this guy got five of them, five wide receivers in the recruiting class for wide receivers coach, associate head coach Marcus Hagens. You were a busy man on the recruiting trail, weren't you? Yeah, we had to get some numbers and... Um Fortunately, we got the right guys and the right players, so we're excited about the guys that are coming in. Now, you're a Virginia guy. You went to Hampton High School. You played every position. The first guy we're going to talk about, a Virginia guy, Tyleric Coleman from Dan River High School. Tell us about him. Well, when you go down 29 South and find players you don't normally miss, um, kind of reminds me a little bit of Juan Thornhill um, that played for us, Vic Hall, down in that area. He just does it all. He's a really good football player, plays both sides of the ball, and um, I'm glad he's in our, our football program. Yeah, so he's going to be a wide receiver here at UVA. Absolutely. He led the state of Virginia in interceptions his junior year, but he's an offensive guy in your mind. Catches the ball on both sides <laughs> of the ball. <laughs> That's all that matters. So um, I'm, I'm glad he's, he's a really good football player, can make plays with the ball in his hand, can take it away from the, the offense if we need to, but he's going to service us on offense and – Played for Brian Womack at Dan River High School. Let's take a look at his highlights. They're going to be on both sides of the ball. You see a lot of speed. You see a lot of playmaking. Absolutely. Kid's a football player. And you put him anywhere on the field. I, I saw him playing the playoffs. They put him at punter, faked the punt, got it for a first down. And just wherever you put him, he's, he's making plays. So that's what you love to see, guys that can make plays all over the field. And um, the game that I went to go watch him play, he didn't come off the field. So that, that excites me. Did he ever punt the ball? <laughs> the, the two times he went back to punter, he faked it, and he got it both times. So I don't know what the other, <laughs> the other side of the ball was thinking on special teams, but there's no chance. I, I thought he was – and it was a rainy game, so it was like there's no way he's punting. But um, he's a really good football player, and um, I'm, ex I'm, I'm excited for him. So he leads the region in receiving yards over 1,000 uh, last season, also receiving touchdowns, had eight of them. What do you see – you know, his future here at UVA when he lands here and, and where he could be in, in four or five years? I think as we teach him to, to sink his hips and transition and, um, you know, really be great with his hands, you see he has the ability to make guys miss after the catch, uh, make people miss in open space. I think he's going to be an electric player for us, and I think he's a, a really, really good player for the future of this program. And another Virginia guy, how much pride does it give you to see a, a guy from in-state play for your alma mater? 
it takes a lot. I mean, it's the University of Virginia. So um, you can't build a program um, with just Virginia guys, but it, it's, a, it's a big part of our program. And it, it, it means more when you say the University of Virginia when guys are from Virginia. So Tyler Coleman from the state of Virginia, Dan River High School. Next guy, you went to the state of Georgia to find. Mm. And all you had to do was look at the record books because <laughs> he is at the top of every single part of the record books. <laughs> Receiving yards, over 5,000 in his career. Yeah. Single season touchdown record receptions, 29 yeah. in the state of Georgia. 59 career touchdown receptions. It is Jaden Gibson oh, from man. the state of Georgia. This, this kid right here, man, he's so productive. And he's such a great, great young man with a bright future. And, um, you know, Coach Lamb had his hand in, in finding Jaden and uh, brought him to the table. And once you watch him start playing, you knew exactly why he was he was excited about him. So I like Jaden a lot. I think he's going to be a really good player for us. So tell us what are the skills that produce such incredible stats for him? I mean, he catches the ball really well with his hands. He gets upfield. He makes guys miss. And he just has a knack for finding the end zone. And so you want to get the ball in his hands as much as you can and just watch him go. Whether it's a reverse, whether it's a jet sweep, whether it's a pass, he's just instant offense. Yeah, you said he's got a knack for the end zone. Wait till we see the highlight tape. You want to watch the last play. I promise you, I have seen it. Wait for the last play to see how desperate this guy is to get in the end zone. Take us through his skill set. See here, he's, you get the ball to him early. He just has an ability to make guys miss, uh, find a big play, and you know, get the ball in the end zone. Like, that's that's easy offense. You don't have to chart up a whole bunch of different plays. You just say, find Jaden, get him the ball, and he can do that. Same thing here, coming in on the tunnel screen. Just just get a couple guys covered up, and he'll take care of the rest. And that's what you like when you have guys at receiver that can do that. That makes the offensive coordinator's job really easy. There's, there's kitchens will be smiling a lot, and uh, so will the receivers coach. So um, he's, he's instant offense. He's very productive. He's patient, understanding where he's supposed to be and how to get there. And then when he gets in space, it's very hard to bring him down. And that's what you, that's what you look for, guys that compete for the end zone every single time they touch the ball. There's the play. I mean, yeah. he would not be denied. He is a competitor for sure. And you know who else is going to love that? Coach Gaither on special teams. So. <laughs> <laughs> is that where we could see Jaden first? Absolutely. A chance to see him in a true freshman year? Or? If, if you want to start on offense, you got to start on special teams. So that's where you got to break the lineup first. Perfectly put. So that's Jaden Gibson from the state of Georgia. This guy, Jess Sign. So Darian Harrison from Woodland High School in South Carolina, just pure athlete. And we were excited to see his press conference and signature come in a few hours ago. Yeah, we, we got a lot of people on staff from South Carolina that are excited about this one, as, a, as am I. And um, this, this kid, man, he's just a football player. He's a great athlete, plays other sports as well. And um, I think he's, he's a hidden gem. And I think when he kind of develops in college and, be, and comes into his own, I think he's going to be a really special player. He was hidden when you found him, but then everybody wanted yeah. him, and, and you guys got him. What was that process like? I think just the relationships. You know, we have a lot of people on staff, uh, Coach Kitch, um, Coach Elliott, that are from South Carolina, and, you know, just building that relationship with him. And I think that ultimately was um, the deciding factor, and just knowing that he has a place that he can call home and develop. Um, I think that's that's going to be a big part of him moving forward. So we're going to develop him, and he's going to be a really good player. So his high school tape that we'll take a look at, mm -hmm. he's going to play just about every position. He was a quarterback oh. a little bit. Sounds like someone I <laughs> might know. 49 <laughs> touchdowns he oh. accounted for his senior year. Here's like 10% of it. Man, this, this guy right here, he, he does – he reminds me of myself in high school. He's just better, um, <laughs> and he can he can do it all. And there's a there's a play coming up where he's going to scramble, and you know it seems like he's going to be tackled by two guys. He's going to duck underneath both of them at the end. I think this might be it right here. I mean, and you can't you can't coach that. <laughs> that's unbelievable. I almost cursed. I was so excited. <laughs> this that that play is that's that's amazing. And so I, I think guys like him, you know, like I said, it's going to not only help our team, but help our special teams, help our offense. And this guy, man, he just he loves football. He loves sports. He loves to compete. He's a great student and um, he's going to be a great addition to our program. And he's carrying the torch he's at Woodland High School, the yeah. alma mater of a guy that we still love, Lavelle Davis. We'll always love. And um, that's always going to be a special place to my heart. Um, great player. From there, even better person, and um, he's going to carry the torch for Laville and, and become something special. What were your thoughts when you saw his signature come through today? Very excited, very excited. It's the the culmination of a lot of hard work, but the beginning of something new. But also, um, like I say, carry on the legacy of Laville. I think that's something that's really special. I'm right, talking with the associate head coach and wide receivers coach Marcus Hagens, and moving on down the list of wide receivers that you've brought in, we'll go to the state of North Carolina and Titus Ivy. So we've seen a lot of 
quick, short burst playmakers. This guy is huge, 6'4", 190. And we see his highlight tape. He goes up and gets the football. He does. The guys joke, but they, they'll they tell you. It's very simple for me. If he can dunk, I'm all in. <laughs> and this guy plays above the rim. And uh, I had a chance to watch him play basketball this, this month. And he's a competitor. He's tough. Uh, man, he's everything we want at receiver. So just his ability to, to, to explode and go up and play above above the rim is going to be a good addition for us in the, in the receiver room. I think Daz will just say throw it up to Titus because we're going to take a look at the, the offensive uh, plays that he makes here. And uh, there are not a lot of slant patterns in this highlight package. It is lob balls to the end zone. We got enough guys for that. We're going <laughs> to we're going to utilize his skill set. We're going to get the ball up in the air. and We're going to let him go get it, create a matchup problem for most of the defenses that we'll play and um, just make life easy for the for, for Coach Kitch to call plays. And as long as this guy can continue to develop and do this on this level, um, a lot of our red zone points will go up and more games will be in our favor. And so also looking at his skill set, you know, just the ability to, to go up and, and be explosive is something we can also use on special teams as well, too. Coach Gaither might have a, a fake punt he can put in now and we can go up and, and, and convert some fourth down. So we're excited about him. I think uh, Titus is going to be a really good player. Um, his mom, you can hear her anywhere in the stands when I went to go watch him play <laughs> basketball. So we're going to have to strategically place her where um, <laughs> she's a, a addition on the other side to, to keep the other team on their toes. But we're excited about him. All right. So Titus coming from Cox Mill High School in North Carolina. Now we switch to the transfer portal. Mm -hmm. You guys bring in uh, Malik Washington from Northwestern University, one of the four transfers in this signing class. There could be some more, but we can only talk about the guys that have signed, and this is a real gem of this recruiting class. Really excited about Malik, um, an amazing young man. Um, he's already graduated. He's just very mature. Um, he's going to bring some leadership to the room, um, create a good example of, of culture and, and what the example looks like, and he's he's a really good player too. So um, I think we got to still here, and I'm excited for what his future is as a Cavalier. So when you saw his name pop up in the transfer portal, I imagine Justin identified him. How quickly were you like, we got to go get this guy? And then what was that process like? I mean, it only took about... 15 seconds of watching this film and you knew like that's the kind of guy that we need in our program and then as you get a chance to get on the phone with him get a chance to meet him in person get him to come and visit you say it's it's a perfect fit you love guys like that that come in your program that fit all aspects and that's what Malik Washington represents it didn't take him long after he visited here to say I want to be a Cavalier I'm glad it did and his mom came down with him she's an amazing woman and um, very lucky that he's trusting us to help him um, further on his, his career. All right, so let's look at his highlights. 65 catches, 694 yards, and a touchdown in his last season where he was all Big Ten. That's the first play, and then there's the second play. The catch, and then what you do afterwards. So the ability to, to move the chains almost four times, 40 yards after the catch, I mean, that's that's pretty impressive. You see him in the slot, stretching the field. That's something that we're, we're going to you know be able to do and use, and he's just you know, just going to create a lot of mismatch problems inside on the slot. Good here. Playing over the middle of the field, making guys miss in space, you know, getting vertical. Like, those are the little things you look for at slot. He's he's not really a slot receiver. He plays in the slot. He's just a, he's a football player, as Coach Elliott likes to say. He's not a, a true receiver. He's a football player. Just happens to play receiver. And then this, this guy just makes plays, and this is what you need in our offense. Yeah, and I love the highlight of him catching a football at Maryland. Oh. That's the third game of the season. We had it up to University of Maryland to, to reignite an ACC battle from back in your day. He should feel right at home, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. That'll, that'll be a fun battle, and um, this, this young man is going to help us uh, win a lot of games on Saturdays. Coach, congrats. Five guys in, in the wide receiver core for you coming in. What are the holiday plans? You had a busy recruiting job here, so finally a little bit of time off. I'm definitely looking forward to it. We'll go up to Philly to see my wife's family, and then um, the 29th on my birthday, we'll go down to 757 and see my family and turn 40 and get ready for the new year. And Turning 40. Yeah, When's the birthday? December 29th. There we go. Four December. years old. Man, you're making me feel old. You were my college quarterback when I was in school. <laughs> As Marcus Hank, it's the associate head coach and wide receiver coach for UVA. Five guys for Coach Higgins. And now we'll transition to running backs when we come back. Coach, thanks so much for coming by. Thanks for having me. That's Marcus Higgins, Cavalier associate head coach. We'll talk running backs with Keith Gaither when we come back.
Well, we just talked wide receivers in this upcoming recruiting class for Virginia on early signing day. And Coach Elliott always says he wants a balanced offense. So now let's talk about the guys that will run the football with running backs coach Keith Gaither. And coach, you got three guys that you brought in. Feeling good about these three that you, you got coming here on grounds. Absolutely, John. I think when you, when you look at this class of running backs, we start with um, all three of them possess great character. Um, all three of them academically fit our institution. And then athletically, um, they're fit. So what you'll see when you watch this film, all of them um, possess a combination of good speed, quickness, good vision, and toughness, and great ball skills. Yeah, so you go out and get three guys. We'll talk a little bit about some recruiting stories in a moment. I know Coach Elliott was uh, <laughs> eager to share some stories about Keith Gaither on the road. But first, let's talk about the guys that you got while on the road. You didn't have to go very far for this guy. Dante Hawthorne from Fredericksburg, Maryland, went to Colonial Forge High School where he graduated, also played quarterback at Massaponics. So he's a versatile guy. Tell us about this guy. Well, first, we'll start off by just recognizing Coach Dez Kitchens. He was the point guy in recruiting him. So he, he basically identified Dante early in the process. And um, he's a big kid that when we first met him, he's roughly a little bit over six foot, um, about 190. And then now he's up to about 215 pounds. So he's a big kid, uh, he's very versatile. He can play multiple positions. Um, he's a kid that's committed to us early in the summertime. He's been rock solid. So um, like you said, um, played option quarterback. So he's got a lot of... Um, um, skill sets that um, transfer to a good running back. And talent identification so important when you're recruiting. You guys were the first school to offer him a scholarship. What did you see in him? Well, first thing you see the size, okay? And then he's, he's one of the top track track and field members in the state of Virginia. So uh, we saw that and then we basically looked at it like, hey, he's got good clay. We can shape him and mold him to a good player. So we wanted this kid in our program. And uh, so he just finally... Um, fit the running back position. So we're excited about Dante. We had a chance to watch him live. Um, you'll see on his film, he's a big kid that got tremendous speed. Um, he can break tackles, good vision. He's just a football player. Yeah. A, and a good kid, you want him in your program. So let's see it. Let's take a look at his highlights. Straight forward running from Dante Hawthorne. So you see here in the mid zone, you can see the, just the speed and the size. Just watch a kid at 200 pounds pull away from guys. Um, you don't see that much. And we watch high school kids. Right here, you'll see a play inside zone. Uh, something we'll do a lot once he gets here. See the footwork, you see the vision, then his natural ability to take care of the rest. And you can see the size right there. He's just pulling away from guys. So his better days in football is ahead of him because he's just learning how to play the position. But you see him break a tackle right there. Once again, you see him pull away and just run through tackles. Can't imagine there are a lot of linebackers and defensive backs in VHSL that like tackling him when he was a quarterback. No doubt. Of all things at Massaponics High School. And me being a former defensive back, I wouldn't want to tackle 215 pounds <laughs> on running back facing head on. Oh, well, you don't have to, thankfully. That's Dante Hawthorne from Fredericksburg, Virginia guy. Again, Absolutely. something else to Take celebrate. Take care of the home state. Class. Take care of the home state. For sure. So, all right, moving on to the next one. Only guy from the state of Tennessee. Noah Vaughn. Now, he's a little bit smaller, 5'9", 185, a little bit different than Dante. What do you like about his game? Well, the one thing about Noah, um, we, we, we was able to get him to camp, so we had a chance to work him out in person. So that's the one thing. He's ultra competitive. Um, he's got good short space quickness, um, tremendous vision. He's a competitor, um, great ball skills. And then I had a chance to watch him live in the playoff game this fall. So um, I think you get the complete package with this kid. He's He's a proven running back from a, a powerhouse high school in Maryville, Tennessee. Yeah, in Tennessee, I mean, he goes to the 6A finals uh, or semifinals in Tennessee, so a proven winner Absolutely. Uh, as well. His yep. highlight package, what do we expect to see here? There's a, there's a couple, few highlights where he's too fast for the cameraman. Well, you'll be able to see a kid here who's very dynamic. You can play him in the slot, you can play him in the backfield, just see the contact balance, see the ability to break tackles with small frame, and then you see the speed outruns the camera. <laughs> and we saw that in camp. You see here, uh, mid-zone, just the vision, just the ability to um, break tackles and then outrun people. Um, you saw their contact balance, uh, just a complete running back when you look at his physique. A tall sweep right here, just the vision to break a tackle right there, and then the rest, just outrun people. Um, this kid's under-recruited, all right? <laughs> I mean, he's going to be a great player for us. And the cameraman finally caught up to his breakaway speed. Anybody that he resembles? That you can put uh, a name on? The body type is like Mike Hollins. All right, very similar to Mike Hollins. Okay, so I imagine Mike looked the same way coming out of high school. Uh, you see the short space quickness there. You see him coming out of the backfield catching the ball. You also see him be able to make people miss. 
All right, and you can't coach that. You get a guy the ball and you find the end zone. And this is done at 6A football in Absolutely. Tennessee, which is a high level of high school football. So that's Noah Vaughn running back from a prep school. Now we move to a transfer. This one just came in. Kobe Pace from Clemson. Proven winner, obviously, coming from that program. Probably familiar with the head coach here at, at UVA. What was it like getting Kobe to commit? Well, um, to be truthful, we was done recruiting the, at running back. We was done. And then about two weeks ago, coach said, hey, the only way we'll take another running back if it's Kobe Pace. <laughs> and so happened that Kobe Pace entered the transfer portal. So we was excited there. Got an opportunity to go to his house and meet the kid. And the first thing you know is about is that smile. I mean, he's a kid that's going to fit in good with our room. He's going to bring tremendous leadership. And he's coming from a program that fits our institution for his values in our football program. And um, in high school, he plays um, at, at a good program at Cedartown. So um, you're getting a kid that can play. Uh, he can play at a high level in the ACC. He's proven. And we're expecting this kid to come in and help us win a lot of football games. Perfect name for a running back, too. we got a musket at quarterback. we got pace for running back as good as it gets when it comes to, uh, to names for at least the broadcasters, which is my side of it. But, uh, you know, he goes for 793 yards at Clemson in his career. Do you see him having a lot of production here next year, making an instant impact? Absolutely. He's been he's recruited by Coach E, coached by Coach E, so we know what we're getting. Uh, he's a kid that got tremendous vision, great footwork, the ability to break tackles, the ability to um, go for 60 yards, something we haven't had last year. So he's got big playability and a tremendous receiver. He'll be a threat in the passing game. So I'm, I'm ultra excited about him. Here are his highlights. See that big paw print. You can see him here on the field. inside zone. I just see the big playability here in the ACC. So uh, we're excited about him coming in our locker room and bringing tremendous leadership and God given the ability. Once again, on a counter play right here, just um, phasing up the second puller and then being able to just break tackles, um, refuse to go down, fighting for the end zone. All right. So that, that, that fires me up here. Another play, uh, counter play. Once again, just tremendous patience. Phasing up the second pull and just been able to find the end zone. And as you watch these highlights here, there's, there's touchdowns for over 40 plus yards. I haven't seen that since I've been here. All right, and then the ball skills we talked about, contact balance, the ability to break tackles. Uh, the Bills to make plays after the catch. Well, look, it's a guy who called some of those plays that we just saw. It's head, uh, head coach Tony Elliott, former offensive coordinator at Clemson. Now, Coach, you've arrived to uh, talk a little bit about Coach Gaither's recruiting <laughs> habits. Word well, is there are no bathroom breaks. No bathroom breaks. You better pack some snacks. You better pack some snacks. You better not ask to touch the radio. You better not ask to, to uh, have them touch the air condition. And... Uh, <laughs> You're on his. You're on his schedule. That sounds like my own personal hell to drive oh, through, you know? through South Carolina or North Carolina, wherever you're going, without a stop. But what? that's what makes him a, a great, a great recruiter. He's tenacious. Uh, he's about relationships. Uh, he values time. Uh, he's gonna get out. He's gonna get out on the road. He's gonna work extremely hard. Same way that he coaches. He has uh, all these players around here, and that's why he's on the staff. Well, John, one thing Coach E won't mention, I learned from him 13 years ago <laughs> oh, when we was on the road out. recruiting together. Then he was driving. And there wasn't no bathroom breaks. He brought his nabs, his peanuts. So, hey, I'll just well, return the favor. Do you, you know that drink water? Is water uh, permitted? Water, water is permitted, but you better bring your own. You know, in particular, I, I can think about it. I mean, just remember the other day we were in Richmond, and it's me, him, and Coach Lamb, and we're, we're bumping around in Richmond, and we come out of a school, and I tried to pull rank as the head coach and said, hey, we're going to get something to eat. He said, yeah, Coach, uh, there's a such and such, there's a such and such, there's a such and such. I get to messing with my phone, making a couple phone calls, and I realize we're at the next school, and we didn't stop. So, <laughs> so, so finally, I had, I had to put my phone down, put my foot down, and say, hey, pull over to that Chick-fil-A right there. We're going to eat. Okay? I don't, I don't matter what. Same thing in Tampa, right? Same thing in Tampa, right, Taylor? I had to say, hey, look, find me something to eat. And you, you know what? I will say this. He treated me well. He took me to a Publix. So he gave me a lot of selections. So he said, you can either have boar's head, uh, deli meat, or you could go get you some chicken fingers. I guess he was tired of hearing me complain. So does he pack snacks, or does he just go without eating? You know, I, I didn't see any I, snacks. I don't recall okay. any snacks. I, I don't pack snacks. Coach Downing is the guy that packs oh, snacks. Oh, Coach Downing and Coach Sentum, man, it's like it's like it's a, a, valet, a valet service. Now, I would tell you this. Shout out, shout out to Miss Nia. I hear, him, I hear everybody making some noise in the back. So I said, uh, I said, man, I'm starting to get hungry. And all of a sudden, <laughs> out of the back, here comes a whole little. Like, it was like a kindergarten snack pack. It had Absolutely. everything in there. It had, and you know, it didn't have like all the your vegetables and stuff, but it had every kind of snack, every sweet <laughs> that you want. It had cookies. It had gummies. It had chips. It was, uh, but you know what? It sustained me, and so it got me 
me through the day. Sentum pulls up. You know, he'll have the car sitting out front ready, okay. warm, temperature <laughs> right. He'll have some uh, a selection of Chick-fil-A. Do you want the burrito? Do you want the biscuit? I got you an orange juice. This guy's right wow. here. He's a buckle your seatbelt. Don't say nothing. <laughs> and I'll feed you at the end of the day. So now the ultimate question, because we've heard about <laughs> recruiting stories with Coach Slade, yep. who apparently drives like it's NASCAR. <laughs> Not even hey, NASCAR. Like, like, like it's, it's Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> like the video game when you ride up, when you ride up Coach Slade. <laughs> it's, it's, okay. it's like you better cross yourself. And, and <laughs> so say we got a recruit in the 757, yes. which is roughly three hour, two and a yeah. half hour. Coach Slade, probably hour 45. Yeah. Who would you rather ride with, Coach Gaither or Coach Slade? Oh, Coach Gaither. And and, and if we have, <laughs> and if there's any questions, if, if I can drive, I'm driving. Just like in last year when we were in Palo Alto chasing a big D lineman, I, I said, Slade, I don't care. You're not giving me the head coach of treatment. You get over there and ride. I'm driving. I want to make it back home to my family. The stories that we have oh, with man. this recruiting oh, class. Oh, my gosh. I mean, and really, like, that's just the tip of the iceberg. I don't know how many, day, how many days did you wake up and you didn't even know what city you were in? A lot. A lot. You just wake up, like, you're rolling at 1130 at night. You, yeah. And then I tell you what, Spiros now, he did a great job of presenting, you know, himself. But, I mean, he, he, he pushes you now. <laughs> it's a 630 flight. It's, a, it's 1130 get into the hotel. And it's one of those, like, Coach, uh, what do you think about it? It's, it's not when he says, what do you think about it? It's more like, hey, this is what this the what schedule is. <laughs> this is what we're doing. You be, where, you be where we say you're supposed to be and you better be on time. He's got me scared to show up late to the, uh, to the flights because, I mean, I tell you what, we got a duty day. Right. Okay. The pilot's got a duty day, and I, he's stretching every minute. You Which know? is twelve hours. Twelve right? hours. 12 right. Hours. So literally, if he's if he schedules a forty-five minute visit at the school, you better visit forty-five minutes, and you better not go over that fifteen-minute travel time back to the uh, back to the airport because he's got the visits lined up. And I swear, man, but awesome. That's why we have the class that we have because of, of how detailed um, everybody is. Last just, question for you: Has anybody gotten a ticket recruiting this class? Oh, mm. <laughs> the I don't know about this class. Coach. <laughs> but, but the first, but the first trip out, you know, you heard about Coach Slade getting the ticket uh, oh, yeah. down there, and actually, all of us were about to get a ticket. That's how that's how bad it was <laughs> about, about the whole staff. We didn't have any, but we did have we did have a, a fender bender. Oh. Uh, somebody ran into uh, into one of our coaches while they were recruiting. So we won't again, name names for that still, one. No, but it wasn't his fault. Okay, it wasn't his fault. He was in the he was in the right. <laughs> there we go. The right. Well, I mean, it's a hard work to get twenty two guys from ten different states. So you guys have put in a lot of miles for it. Well, no, we appreciate we appreciate Carla. We appreciate the administration for providing us the resources and the opportunity to be as efficient and effective uh, as possible. And we wouldn't be able to do it without their support and supporting our vision and understanding you know what we're trying to do. And uh, at the same time, I appreciate the coaches for being resourceful and. and not taking advantage of the institution's resources as they go out and recruit, doing it the right way. Uh, but, again, trying to turn over every stone and find the right guys that fit our program. All right. Coach Gaither, thanks for coming by. Are you allowed to eat back here? Are you uh, – again? Eat. All right, there we go. About to eat right now. All right, good. So, well, you see, the day – his work's we're done. still. That's so right. He, he waits until so the work's done. Now. So, he was, he, was, he was raised right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you don't eat until the work gets done. All right, Coach, we'll talk with you later. Coach Gaither, thanks so much appreciate for coming it. by. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you. That's uh, running backs Coach Keith Gaither. We'll start with the quarterbacks when we come back. Taylor Lamb on the other side of this break. Everybody always wants to know about the quarterback. So we saved the best for last. We've got quarterback coach Taylor Lamb, and we are wrapping up the 22-player class in this Virginia football signing day recruiting class. We celebrate here at Scott Stadium, John Freeman. And now, Taylor Lamb, you got two guys that we're talking about, Taylor. And uh, we'll start guy from Florida, Anthony Calandria. Mm -hmm. Good visit there, right? That was a wonderful visit. <laughs> wonderful visit. Now, we, we've uh, been recruiting Calandria since, uh, since spring. 
Um, so it was good to get down there in this past uh, past couple weeks and see him. This is a really athletic guy too, not just a drop back quarterback, right? Yeah, no, he he's creative. Uh, he can make make plays, throw from off platforms, um, runs better than you think. So uh, no, we're definitely excited about him. So he completes 64 percent of his passes his senior year, Lakewood High School in St. Petersburg. When did he first get on your radar? Uh, I'd say this spring. Went went to watch him. Uh, went to watch him scrimmage this spring um, down at Lakewood in Tampa or in St. Pete, and uh, and you could tell, you know, as soon as you could see it on the field, his leadership abilities. He was running the whole show out there. Um, kind of has what you want from a mental standpoint, quarterback, um, and he can rip it. So that's always good. And he's a winner. Thirty-five yeah. and four. That's right. As a starting quarterback in his high school career, what are you looking for when you're evaluating quarterbacks at the high school level to fit into Coach Elliott and, and uh, Coach Kitching system? Yeah, we always say you got to be able to throw the ball uh, to win games. Um, you know, two-minute drive. You got to be able to complete passes to all to all uh, platforms of the field. But um, you know, we're, we're looking at Calandria, um, his ability to move. We, we always say you don't have to be able to run fast, but your ability ability to move in the pocket and create plays um, off platform is huge, especially in today's game. Let's take a look at his highlight sure. reel. This is Anthony Calandria from. Florida quarterback commit for the Cavaliers, one of two guys that are signed at the quarterback position. Take us through what you see here on tape. Yeah, you can see, you know, from a smaller guy, um, he's got a big arm, uh, generates a lot of power right here, and then uh, can create. And obviously, you can see his athleticism here uh, with the hurdle. Uh, I was actually at that game, uh, threw a flag. Uh, he supposedly can't hurdle <laughs> in high school, uh, which is new to me. But you can see his creativity here, keeping eyes downfield, scrambling. Uh, to throw and uh, really, really accurate down the field. And this is against some really good competition in Florida, too. Yes, yes. You ask anybody in the Tampa area or Florida, uh, they know Anthony Calandria. They do. We, we were going around schools, and all the coaches talk about this kid right here. Um, you know, in my eyes, he's the best in the Sunshine State this year. So super excited to get him to Virginia. And great family, too. You guys had a really nice visit when you went down there. Yes, we did. Uh, Miss Calandria knows how to host. So we, we, had, we had a good meal there. All right, so moving on to another quarterback commit. This one of the four transfers mm -hmm. in this recruiting class. Perfect name, by the way, for a quarterback. Tony Musket yep. from Monmouth. What do you like about Tony's game? Uh, well, I've actually seen Tony play live. Uh, my previous job, we played against him. Um, he's got everything you want, you know, from a quarterback standpoint, and he's from the state of Virginia. Uh, but when we look at when we're looking at we've got in the portal for a quarterback we wanted guys who's you know experienced who's played a bunch of ball you know didn't matter the level um and then obviously he's from the state of virginia which is a bonus he went to west springfield high school broke a bunch of records there was a great quarterback in high school didn't really get recruited too much does he have a chip on his shoulder as a quarterback oh for sure for sure you know he's a three-year starter um from his previous school a two-year all-american um you know, he has that chip on his shoulder, and that's kind of why he ventured into the portal to, to prove some people wrong. So Let's take a look at some of his tape. This coming from Monmouth University, where he was a All-Big South player, two-time first team All-Big South in that conference. This is FCS football. He's yep. got quite the arm, too. Yes, he's really, really polished quarterback. You can tell by his fundamentals in the pocket. He's um, He's got great pocket presence, got a big arm, quick release. Um, and you can obviously tell by his stats at a, at a Division One level that, um, and, and that he's a winner, right? And he's and he completes a lot of balls. So, and what have you told him about the competition and, and how the whole quarterback position will look next year with Brendan Armstrong moving on, the record-setting quarterback that you coached last season? Yeah, well, this guy's ready to compete. You know, uh, how we handle the quarterback room here, the best will play. So, uh, get these guys, all these guys, reps on the roster in the spring and and uh, see who turns out on top. But this kid, is uh, he's ready to compete at a high level. And a healthy competition doesn't hurt anybody, right? That's what you want. Yeah, yeah, competition breeds greatness, so we're ready. All right, Coach, what are you doing for, for your few days off here? Oh, uh, headed down, down down south, South Carolina, Georgia. Hopefully it's warm enough to play a little golf, but we'll see. Okay. Yeah. Good golfer or just like average? Out? Yeah, average, average, yeah. I don't know about yeah, that. No, you're, you're good at most we're everything average, you average. do. We're then, average. Uh, lastly, what do you just have to say about this quarterback class and the quarterbacks that you already have? in the room here at UVA. Yeah, no, super excited about this spring. Obviously, we'll, we'll know a lot coming out of spring, but the two we've added, uh, we felt like we've we've uh, elevated the room um, and added a lot of guys, both those guys that we added, Calandria and Musket, they love football and they're, they're high, they got a high football IQ, so. All right.
We'll see you soon. Go get yeah. that fish and pig behind no us. Doubt. I think we'll everybody's do. pretty wrapped up yes, by sir. now. You probably out a bit too. That is uh, Taylor Lamb, quarterback coach for UVA. His two quarterbacks round out the 22-person class here for the Cavaliers. And we'll round things up when we come back with Tony Elliott, the head coach. We'll put a bow on our signing day celebration from Scott Stadium. to our signing right. day celebration here <laughs> in Scott Stadium. Coach Elliott has brought notes to wrap up today's celebration. 22 guys for UVA signed transfers, prep school guys. Yep. Uh, we've got the whole game in a bunch of different states up and down the East Coast. Yep. Uh, Coach, what do you like the most about this class? The fact that they chose us. You know, they, they decided to, to come to UVA and, and obviously didn't have the first season that I was expecting, but it's what we earned, what we got, and it's the season that we have. Definitely didn't expect it to end the way that it did. And just really, really proud uh, that these guys, you know, we lost one commitment uh, amidst all of the, the, the things that we had to endure here late in the season. We lost one commitment. The rest of these guys stuck with us. And then there were several guys who weren't committed that decided to come be a part of the uh, of the healing process and, and the rebuild uh, of this program. What What's the day like? For you, oh, it's it's all <laughs> digital now. Like you guys right. do the docu sign. You probably remember the stand around the fax oh, machine. Oh, I had a stand around the fax. I I remember the up until three o'clock in the morning. You know, babysitting somebody on the phone to make sure that uh, that he's going to send that fax in the morning. But you know, wanted to kind of recreate some of that joy and excitement because because really. What this is about, uh, amidst all the stuff that's going on, is, is this is about the culmination of a journey, a part of the journey for these young men. They've been dreaming their, their whole high school careers about this day uh, and really wanted to celebrate and then really celebrate the staff and all of their work uh, that they put in to, to recruit these young men uh, to get them to, to send in. So this morning, got up, and then I, I was about 7.03, 7.04, walking in the building. Uh, already, everybody is not necessarily around the facts, but they're around Kristen and uh, her and uh, her computer because she's now has to uh, compliance has to document everything before we can announcement. And as soon as she got the docu signs from the parents and the kid and put them together and validated them, then she'd make an announcement and you hear everybody go down the halls erupting. And then you have FaceTimes going on and you know guys are just rolling out the bed. You know, but they got big smiles on their face. I mean, what a way to wake up to know that today is the day that you that you got you signed that scholarship. Oh, guys are like literally on their laptop in their bed at seven oh five. Some of them, some of them, the some signature. of them are still in the bed. You know, the parents are up. The parents are excited. <laughs> some of the kids are rolling out of their bed. But uh, for me, it was a lot of fun, and then just to see the uh, the pure joy and elation from the staff to to see uh, the the fruits of their labor to actually you know have these guys uh, sign and send their paperwork in. Now we're so excited for these twenty two scholar athletes yep. to come to Virginia. The work isn't quite done yet, though. There's still a chance to add a few more, right? Correct. You know, at some point we got one, uh, you know, one of the top players in the state is going to make a decision later this afternoon, and we got our fingers crossed and hoping that he uh, decides to, to stay home. He's got some great opportunities uh, elsewhere at, at other big uh, Power 5 programs, but hopefully uh, we've done enough from a relationship standpoint to, uh, to tip him in our favor. So we'll find out about him. And then again, you know, we'll put this one to bed, get back in January, and then we got another signing period uh, just to see if there's any other uh, attrition on the on the on the team or if there's any other uh, needs that we didn't fill um, there's also going to be a great crop of uh, high school guys out there unfortunately that are not that are not going to sign in this window so we'll uh, we'll, go, we'll take a little bit of a break but then we're going to go back to work uh, making sure that we feel uh, whatever needs that we have left five guys from the commonwealth in this yep. recruiting class yep you can look at the camera what do you have to say <laughs> to potential virginia football recruits in the commonwealth about playing uh, in their home state for this program what i'm gonna tell them is tell me why Tell me why you need to leave the state of Virginia. 
Uh, when you talk about world-class academics, you got it here at UVA. You talk about an opportunity to play at the highest level in the best conference in college football, you got that here at UVA. We got an unbelievable administration led by Carla Williams. Uh, she's a real AD. You know, she, she's been a coach. Uh, she's all about the, the student athlete. Uh, you got a program uh, that's being run by, by a group of men that got a championship pedigree. So really, there's no reason to leave the state of Virginia. Uh, now, it's our job to make sure that we build the relationships with you and your families and your high schools uh, and prove to you. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think if, if, we're, if you give us a chance to do our job, to illustrate to you why UVA is the best, uh, it's going to be a very difficult decision and a hard decision. And hopefully, uh, the decision will be to stay home. I love that message. I'm sure you're delivering it in living rooms <laughs> across the Commonwealth. This has been so fun. Yep. This was your idea to put all this together. So thank you so much for oh, it. Oh, definitely, because because I want to take one one last opportunity to celebrate these young men. Because, again, remember, they're choosing to come to UVA. They're choosing to come for, to play for Coach Elliott and his staff, uh, this administration, this institution. So it's a special day in any way that we can celebrate them and their families uh, one more time. And then, you know, also for our fans. Uh, that really want to insight into into what goes into recruiting, just to see how difficult of a, of a job it is and how special it is when uh, young men choose to come be a part of your program. So definitely want to do this and want to continue to do it year after year and hopefully uh, find ways to tweak and, and get better each time we do it. All right, so you got hired, what, 13 months ago? I guess. And you have hit the ground running. <laughs> do you finally get a few days off here? Finally, a couple of days. I, I think I'm gonna go home, cut my phones off, you know, crash face first into the bed, <laughs> and, and try to sleep for for a legit 12 hours. Uh, but but really gonna go focus on now being a, a part of my family. Uh, enjoy the boys, enjoy the wife, and uh, get away, you know, kind of decompress because uh, there's been a lot that's transpired. I know we're celebrating um, a signing day in this uh, recruiting class, but there's there's a lot to, to decompress from because we still got a long way to go. We got a, we got a huge task in front of us. We got a, uh, another step in our journey, and we need to be refreshed mentally uh, and physically when we come back in January so we can, uh, you know, take up the charge of, of going back up the mountain. Coach, get a few few days off, get that 12 hours of sleep. <laughs> Thank you so much for everything you're doing uh, for the program uh, as a spokesperson and a way for the fans. Uh, we're so excited to see where you're, no, you're bringing you. this program. Thank you. I have to thank you and, and everybody else for, for believing in me and this staff and giving us the opportunity. Uh, that's one thing that, that, that we pride ourselves up about being a program is appreciation. And we're very, very grateful for the opportunity. We don't take it for granted. And we're going to work extremely hard to, to make you and everybody else proud uh, of what we're doing here at UVA. All right, Coach. Thank you so much. I and to you and, and your staff, congratulations on this recruiting class here at UVA. I appreciate it. Thank you. That's going to do it for us at Scott Stadium. Cavaliers signed 22 players, maybe some more coming, but a big celebration tonight for all of those in orange and blue. For everybody involved in the broadcast, I'm John Freeman saying so long. We'll do it again next year, signing day, Virginia football. Thanks so much for spending part of your afternoon with us.